And coming up next, more promising news about a treatment of a malignant brain tumor from one of the nation's leading brain surgeons. That is next in today's health news, so don't go far. On August 25th of this year, Senator Ed Ted Kennedy died after a long battle with a malignant brain tumor, one of the most difficult cancers to treat. But new research and treatments are now bringing hope to brain cancer patients. A few weeks ago, I got the chance to talk to one of the nation's top cancer researchers, Dr. Christopher Duma, about advances in brain cancer care. Dr. Duma, we appreciate you being here this morning with us to talk a little bit about what obviously is a very serious diagnosis I and mean, all forms of cancer are it's, it's, it's a scary diagnosis to get but when you hear brain tumor it, 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 that, that's a different kind of resonance for a lot of people that is true uh, and this year in particular with uh, senator kennedy mm. in the spotlight it's uh, taken on uh, uh, you know a lot of publicity and this is your specialty so obviously you're in a position to talk about the different treatments that are out there now so if you do get that unfortunate diagnosis there are options out there people need to be aware of yeah there are uh, the tumor that is the worst in the brain, and the type that, doc that Senator Kennedy had, uh, has numerous treatment options, but they're not very good. Uh, and we certainly don't have a cure for that tumor yet, but we're getting there. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, fascinating approaches right now is uh, antibodies directed against the tumor. So not chemotherapy per se, not chemicals, but actual antibodies directed toward the tumor. And another approach that I personally use is directing focused beams of radiation along the pathways that this tumor actually migrates. Is that the, that's the special we talked about a little bit, the gamma knife? That, that, Correct. Talk to folks a little bit about that, what that actually is. Well, this tumor, the, uh, the most malignant tumor that exists in the brain called a glioblastoma, uh, actually takes on a life of its own. It, the, the tumor cells, not only do they duplicate, they replicate, but they actually become motile. They can move like an amoeba through mm -hmm. the brain and they take these pathways uh, that are already built into the brain called white matter tracts. And what I've been doing is directing focused radiation along those tracts, uh, something like cutting it off at the pass. Right. And uh, I've seen some excellent results with uh, many of my patients in terms of stopping the growth of tumor for very long periods of time. And at this point, what would you say is the leading treatment? What, what seems to be right now the most effective? Well, I mean, the, con the conventional treatment for this tumor is chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Radiation therapy, the old-fashioned way where you give a, a small fraction of radiation over six weeks, mm -hmm. and at the same time you take a pill, a chemotherapy pill, which is you know, much more tolerable than the usual IV form. Uh, but unfortunately, the median survival is only about 17 months uh, with that regimen. So there has to be some more new, modern approaches for this disease. And you said we're, we're getting there slowly but surely in terms of a better treatment, but are we still, are we, are we still years away, are we months away, or is it just you know, hard to I, pinpoint? I, it's hard to say, but I think that we're years only away. I think there's uh, great hope in, in the future. I have some patients with this disease who are out five years, seven years, without any evidence of progression. Do I call it a cure? I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, uh, the reality is, is that we're definitely making an impact on it. And in the middle of this, this national health care reform debate right now in terms of the cost of health care these days, the average person with their average health insurance plan through their employer or what have you, what, what kind of financial burden do they assume in terms of the, the brain cancer, something that serious? I assume it has to be extraordinarily expensive. Yeah, I mean, to go through these chemotherapy regimens and the surgical treatments, taking out these tumors, uh, you know, five, six-day hospital stays uh, after surgery, these bills are enormous, but uh, right now our healthcare system does cover it beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, if the, the patients have insurance, Medicare covers it, Medi-Cal, and I'm from California, Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, they, it's all covered by those, including the chemotherapy regimens. So that's, that's a positive. It's just getting that access to all the patients is, is a little difficult. And if someone does get this diagnosis, what's the best advice you offer them at that moment after they kind of absorb the, sh you know, absorb the shock of, of getting that kind of news? If you have that kind of tumor, what should be step two? Yeah, I think that you know this is a life and death situation. I mean, you have a brain tumor that is malignant, and my biggest recommendation is for people to get multiple opinions. There are many ways to skin this cat. And uh, I would highly recommend two or three different opinions as to how to manage it and to feel, the, feel good about your treatment plan yourself, not just take the word of one doctor. And what are any, any symptoms of it before it becomes too late or inoperable? No, that's, no. There, there are symptoms and it's never really too late. Uh, the, the most common presenting symptom of a brain tumor is 
headache, mm -hmm. as you might imagine. Some patients will present with a seizure, uh, epilepsy, mm -hmm. and other patients will present with some sort of neurologic deficit, like a weak arm or they can't speak. Those are the three most common presenting symptoms. The treatments are getting better and life expectancy is going up. I expect them to, get, to go way up in the future. All right, doctor, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck to you, what you're doing, your procedure and your research. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back with more after this.